Tennessee is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And now I'd like to yield three minutes to the gentleman um, for Virginia, who is the chair of the Judiciary Committee and a longstanding supporter of pro-life, Mr. Goodlatte. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized for three minutes. I thank the gentlewoman and I thank her for her ardent work on this important cause. However stark Americans' differences of opinion can be on the matter of abortion generally, there has been long bipartisan agreement that federal taxpayer funds should not be used to destroy innocent life. The Hyde Amendment, named for its chief sponsor, former House Judiciary Committee Chairman Henry Hyde, has prohibited the federal funding of abortion since 1976, when it passed a House and Senate that was composed overwhelmingly of Democratic members. It has been renewed each appropriation cycle with few changes for over 40 years, supported by Congresses controlled by both parties and presidents from both parties. It is probably the most bipartisan pro-life proposal sustained over a long period of time, over a longer period of time than any other. It's time the Hyde Amendment was codified in the U.S. Code. H.R. 7, the No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act, sponsored by Representative Chris Smith of New Jersey, would do just that. It would codify the two core principles of the Hyde Amendment throughout the operations of the federal government, namely a ban on federal funding for abortions and a ban on the use of federal funds for health benefits coverage that includes coverage of abortion. As hundreds of thousands of people from across the country come to Washington to express their love of unborn children at the annual March for Life, and as we now have a president who supports this legislation, let's reflect on what could be accomplished if the bill we consider today were signed into law. During the time the Hyde Amendment has been in place, the most reliable estimates and those of the Congressional Budget Office are that millions of innocent children and their mothers have been spared the horrors of abortion. Millions of lives have been saved, and of those millions of lives saved, many more have grown up to bear their own children and to raise them in happy, loving families. This bill is more than a proposed law. It is a celebration of the lives of those millions of Americans, boys and girls, men and women of all races, who give joy and feel love and create and contribute, all because of the policies this bill contains. And even more than that, this bill is a welcome sign for millions and millions more Americans to come. I congratulate the President for already reinstating the Mexico City policy, which prohibits the federal funding of abortions overseas. And I look forward to his signing this bill into law to codify the same policy here 